analysis for 23rd of January 2024. Now, let us start with the today's agenda of the day where we'll be discussing the editorial section related to why was FCRA, that is Foreign Contract Regulation Act registration for several NGOs was cancelled. Now, which we have taken from the Indian Express, then we'll be discussing some news update and the way we go ahead, we'll be discussing some legal news update of the day. So let us start with the context of this particular editorial where the Foreign Contribution Regulation Act registration of two prominent NGOs, that is non-governmental organization, which is Center for Policy Research and World Vision India has been cancelled this month by the government. Now, let us first discuss that who monitors this process. So, the Union Ministry of Home Affairs monitors the implementation of FCRA. The registration of thousands of NGOs was due for several renewal in 2020 and 2021. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic and the amendments to the FCRA Act in 2020, many NGOs could not complete the process. The Ministry of Home Affairs had given a relief up to 30th September 2021 to NGOs whose registration was expiring between 29th September 2020 till 30th September 2021 to apply for the renewal process. And the uh, ministry extended the deadline multiple times and the latest was being till 31st March 2024. Through the FCRA, the ministry regulates the foreign donation to ensure that the funds do not adversely affect the country's internal security. Now, it is compulsory in the act to register themselves, which was first enacted in 1976. The 1976 was replaced with a new legislation in 2010. It was further amended in 2020 and the registration is valid for five years after which the NGO has, NGO has to apply for renewal. Now, it is mandatory for all such NGOs to register under FCRA, initially valid for five years. That can be renewed if it complies with all the norms. Now, how many have lost the registration? So since 2015, FCRA registration of more than 16,000 NGOs have been cancelled on account of violation. Now, as on January 22nd, 16,000 plus FCRA registered NGO are active in the country. The FCRA registration of nearly 6,000 NGO have been seized. Now, there was a report of 2012 by the ministry that there are over 20 lakh registered NGOs in the country and number of such NGOs registered in the FCRA will be less than 2%. That is a big amount and big state uh, statistics. While it is not proper to make sweeping generalizations, it is necessary to know that NGO sector is India is vulnerable in the risk of money laundering and terrorist financing. Now, in 2023, a record number of 1,000 plus associations were granted fresh registration. Analysis of the data show that nearly half of the FCRA registration under the religious category are, are of Christian NGOs. The ministry informed the Lok Sabha on December 19, 23, that out of total 1,600 applications received for registration of FCRA, as merely 700 plus applications were granted clearance, while 200 plus registrations were grant applications were grant were rejected. The ministry said that a total of 13,520 association received 55,741 crore foreign contribution in the financial year that is last three financial year. Now, when we discuss that why the ministry uh, cancelled CPR and WVI registrations. So, the ministry alleged that the CPR diverted foreign donation to fund protest and legal battle against development project and misused funds to affect India's economic interests. It alleged that the thin tank engaged in production of current affairs program which violated FCRA norms. CPR had furnished a report on air pollution, overview of the Commission for Air Quality Management Act 2021, policy changes for the new government. CPR said to the ministry decision is incomprehensible, disproportionate, and some of the reason given challenge the very basis of functioning of the research institution. 
This includes the publication on our website of policy report, a mountain, a mountain from our research being equated with current affairs programming. So what has happened that the ministry has alleged that this particular two organizations have, you know, diverted their funds to affect the economic and internal interest of the country. And, and in, in reply to the fact, the CPR has contended that this particular allegations are disproportionate. So let us see what happens. But uh, yes, there are various regulations that needs to be followed. Now, let us start with the national news of the day. We'll be, be speaking on Global Good Alliance for Gender Equity and Equality launched at Davos with support from India. So at the World Economic Forum 24 comes to close. One of the key takeaways from this year annual meeting was the announcement of the launch of Global Good Alliance for gender equity and equality with the support and endorsement by the forum and the government of India. Now, the World Economic Forum praised India's inclusive and remarkable growth story under PM Narendra Modi visionary leadership, commending the government philosophy of Sabka Saath and Sabka Vikas. The initiative builds on the commitment of G20 leader declaration and India's dedication to women-led development. Okay, so good, Global Good Alliance for Gender Equity Equality launched at Davos with the support from India. Now, India elected as first vice chair of COFI, that is chair of Food and Agricultural Organization, subcommittee on fisheries management. So India has been elected as the first vice chair of the Food and Agricultural Organization, COFI, subcommittee on fisheries management. India will serve as a member of FAO Fisheries Bureau on capture fisheries for the first time in 57 years. India is one of the top fishing nations with over 28 million inland and marine fisheries. Food and Agricultural Organization uh, of the United Nations is a specialized agency of the United Nations that leads international efforts to defeat hunger and improve nutrition and food security. The headquarters is at Rome, Italy. It is founded on 16th of October 1945, Quebec City, Canada. And parent organization is United Nations Economic and Social Council. So India will be the will be elected as the first vice chair of this prestigious organization. Tata Groups secures title sponsorship right for IPL 24. And 28. So Tata Group has backed the title sponsorship of the Indian Premier League for 24-28 for a record-breaking $300 million. IPL has become the world's richest T20 tournament with an estimated brand value of $8.4 billion. It has been a cash cow of Indian Cricket Board with a 10-team league 2023-27 media rights fetching $6.2 billion dollar so big amount but tata has secured the title sponsorship india open thailand puvan kro and tera tanachai win mixed double so thailand the the two phenomenal players of the thailand clinched the indian open 2024 mixed double title by defeating world number five chinese duo of jiang zen bang and we gazing in straight set 21 and 16. India, this was the third Super 750 title for the Thai pair, ranked World 7 in the BWF ranking. Indonesia Masters is the next event of BWF calendar starting 23rd of January. So this is something related to sports. Man Singh becomes second Indian man to win gold at Asian Marathon Championship. So Man Singh became only the second Indian man to clinch a gold medal at an Asian Marathon Championship as he won the race with the personal best time. The 34-year-old Man Singh clocked 2 hours, 14 minutes and 19 seconds to win the competition. With another Indian in the fray, AP Beliapa finished 6 with time of 2 hours, 20 minutes and 20 seconds. Tri Party MU signed between Nationals Farmer Welfare Program Implementation, Indian AI, and Vadwani Foundation. So there is a, a Tri Party MU that has been signed, which has been signed for leveraging the cutting edge artificial intelligence technology for the benefit of farmers to increase overall productivity. 
On 17th of January 2024, a tripartite memorandum of understanding was signed between the National Farmer Implementation Society, Indian AI, under Digital Indian uh, Cooperation and Vadhwani Foundation. This comprehensive solution is available in Hindi, Tamil, Odia, Bangla, English, and is evolving to support other governmental programs and has been assessed by more than 21 lakh farmers within two months. So this is a very, it's a very important MOU that has been signed to have to, you know, to, uh, so that we can use AI generated tools in our economy. Assam inducts Black Panthers police commando trained by army. So at the Saru uh, Sajai Sports Complex in Guwahati, amid hundreds of spectators and dignitaries, including Home Minister Amit Shah and uh, uh, Assam Chief Minister, a group of young commando dressed in their black combat fatigue, armed with the latest close-range sniper and automatic weapons, rappelled down a rope from a hovering advanced light helicopter of the Army Aviation Group for a demo of a tactical exercise. These commandos are the fresh batch of Assam, Black Panthers, the state very own commando battalions of police force. Now, coming up to the international news, where we'll be talking about astronauts from Turkey, Sweden, and it Italy to launch to space station on, uh, so they will be launching uh, to space station. So Turkey's first astronaut along with a Swedish and Italian launch Thursday to the International Space Station on the chartered SpaceX flight. So the Falcon rocket blasted off from the NASA Kennedy Space Center, carrying the three men, all with military pilot experience and representing their homeland. They will be spending two weeks performing experiments, chatting with chatting up school children and soaking in the views of Earth before returning home. So let us understand something about NASA's important mission here. Apollo mission of NASA brought first human to moon. Space shuttle was the first mission of NASA in which a spacecraft was reused. 166 manned space missions are launched by NASA so far. STS-1 was the first manned mission of NASA. In 2018, NASA launched its first mission to Sun and Pioneer 4 was NASA's first exploration mission beyond Earth. Now, coming up to the legal update, which is from Karnataka High Court, principle of pay and recover to be applied in cases where driver license not provoked. So it held that in cases where it is not proved that deceased driver of a vehicle involved in a road accident possesses valid driving license, the claim tribunal will have to apply principle of pay and recover by directing the insurance company to deposit the compensation amount and recover it later from the owner of the vehicle. And the case name is New India Assurance Company Limited and Sadika and others. Now, that's all for the today's news update. If you want to revise your previous TNA, then do attempt the quiz that is mentioned in the description of this particular TNA. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.